So this is a pretty cool effect. Um, it just like pops all of the colors that are saturated and like makes them even more saturated and then makes everything else black and white. Um, so the video is going to lag. I apologize. It's a, a new feature in Spark AR. Um, I hope it's resolved soon. Uh, but anyway, just to give you guys more um, kind of uh, examples, like this is a, a block plane. You can see uh, the yellow is shown up pretty nicely. And then on this shirt, it's a pretty cool shirt by uh, Space Goose. Um, I'll link to his stuff. Uh, but yeah, you can see like the yellows are showing up nicely and then the, the pinks um, and then everything else is black and white. So pretty cool little effect. Um, for links, um, first of all, this is the project files are going to be up on GitHub as usual. Um, if you want to sponsor me, uh, there will be a heart button up there. Um, and shirts by Eric. Uh, you can get a number of shirts. They're all super cool. Um, he makes stuff into spaceships. Uh, so if you're into that kind of thing, um, buy a shirt. OK, so. Um, I'm going to slam that up there. Um, going to disconnect the output. So step one for this, uh, we're just going to make a grayscale um, image. Um, there's going to be a link to all of these patches in the description, of course. Um, they're Spark color adjustment patches. So we're going to use a, a number of them. And then there's a blurring as well. So grayscale is super simple. You just pipe in input texture, and then you get a grayscale output. That's it. Um, but for this effect, we want to like pump the contrast. Uh, this contrast node is another one in the the collection of image uh, uh, color adjustment patches. So uh, we're gonna pipe that into there, and then we have a nice crisp, contrasty image. Um, and then all this stuff down here is where the, the color magic happens. Um, so the idea is that you kind of darken the initial image, and we're doing that here by multiplying. You could probably do it with the exposure patch or like brightness. Um, there's a number of ways. Um, and then we, I should zoom in, huh? Um, and then we're gonna convert um, from RGB to HSL. Uh, RGB is red, green, blue, of course. And then HSL is hue, saturation, and lightness. Um, so the saturation channel is the one we're going to be targeting. Um, so I'm just going to copy these two guys and then plug it in. Um, oops. This patch editor is going crazy. Um, okay, pasted all the way over there. So I guess I'll show you what the the blending looks like. Um, it's just going to make everything look like a little bit darker. Nothing too crazy. Um, and then when we put it into this color space, uh, the the input for textures ex uh, expects RGB, so it's going to show the values in those channels. So when you switch to HSL, you get like this pretty cool um, kind of garbage-looking image. It looks very like I don't know late '80s style. Could be cool for an effect on its own. Um, so I'm just going to break this down. Um, with some swizzles. If I can type on this keyboard, I'll use this other keyboard. Um, so we're going to look at the hue layer first, just for fun. Um, X 
zero, zero, one. So this swizzle is correlating um, Q with the red channel and then just using an alpha of one. So that's pretty cool. Maybe you can use that for something. Um, we'll do uh, saturation next. This is the channel that we're actually interested in. Um, so you can see it's like pretty noisy actually. Um, part of that is because this is through a webcam, but like the problem is also there uh, on device. So we're gonna do we're gonna take some steps to clean it up a little bit and kind of compress it into the range we want. Because right now you can see like pretty much anything that has saturation is like showing up. So like even this this white wall in the background shows up because it has a little bit of saturation. Um, and then just for fun, we'll do a lightness channel. Oh, okay, I'm doing this wrong actually, because X, X is always going to be uh, hue. So I lied. Um, saturation will be Y. So we're gonna correlate that with the green channel and see what that looks like. Okay, yeah, that looks right. Um, so you can see actually all the white walls in the background are are black because um, they have no saturation and then my shirt has a bunch um, And then the hat of course also has a bunch um, So and then the Z component would be lightness so maybe you can use those um, Channels for other stuff like lightness could be used to to convert to grayscale if you want to do that um, there's also this grayscale patch though. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna cheat and I'm gonna look down here. So we go to color space. Um, yeah, these these two steps are for cleaning up the the noisiness that comes with um, that uh, saturation channel. So step one. I have to look again because my memory is terrible. Uh, smooth step. So um, with the smooth step, we're going to kind of constrain the values and um, just kind of away from the edges because I think that's where like all the noisiness happens. So like you can see the, the white in the background gets a little noisy and then these like super dark tones get noisy. So we're going to throw a smooth step. in there. So even like just the smooth step smooths it out already, but uh, we're gonna bring up the black a little bit at the bottom edge. Um, and then we're gonna bring down the top edge. Actually, I mean, I'm gonna veer off path here because setting it to one looks pretty good. I don't know. This is this is something you can play with to like get the exact effect you're going for. Maybe we'll go crazy, go to like 0.4. It's not going to match the original, but whatever. Um, so I mean, you can still see some noise in there. It's like camera noise. So we're going to try to get rid of that just with uh, a very light blur and kind of muddy those colors together so they're not as jumpy. So, I mean, it sort of works. It's better than nothing, so we'll keep it. Um, and then, so like after that, that's that's pretty good um, as far as like making a mask. So, uh, it looks like I did smooth step again over here. All right, we might just skip some of this um, and go with a, a swizzle. Um, so this, this eventually outputs as the alpha channel of, um, the main texture that has like a couple of other, um, effects added to it. Um, and that's going to give us our, our like super vibrant colors, which of course you get through vibrance patch. Um, so what are we doing? Uh, we're going to swizzle out Y and then do all this stuff. Vibrant. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to copy that. 
So this is going to be our mask, our alpha channel. So we're going to swizzle again. Uh, we're just going to grab the saturation channel. So just Y. And then that's going to be packed in pack. And then we can see what that looks like. It's not going to look like much. Um, it's actually going to throw an error. Um, but we can see what it looks like. If we pipe in the RGB. So that's just our, our camera texture. Okay, so you can see it in this window actually because there's nothing behind it. So you can see the hat shows up nicely and the shirt shows up nicely. Um, but my actual skin and like the walls don't. Uh, so um, vibrance. I'm just gonna step through this and like show you guys what each of these are doing. So vibrance is just gonna make the colors like more saturated. Why is that? Oh, okay. So I'm I'm gonna skip the mask and just go straight in. Yeah, so you can, you can see, okay, still complaining. All right, so you can see like the colors are way more like in your face and that's what we're going for. Um, and then exposure, uh, I honestly don't know why I put that there. Just uh, something you can like tweak with, and play around with to, to get the effect you want. Maybe, you know, we'll do like 0.75 because that seems like kind of harsh so I don't know let's call that good um, and then we're gonna we're gonna pack these two together and use the alpha mask from this uh, um, HSL conversion step that we did and then pipe it into there um, but so that's good and all that that's like our our top layer um, and then to get the bottom layer we're gonna do like a a blend mode um, that's just normal. It's like in Photoshop, it's essentially the same as just having a layer on top of another layer. So um, I'm gonna get blend. Uh, so we want this to be the bottom layer. And then this thing is going to be the top layer. And there you have it. So this effect is pretty cool. Um, a lot of people ask me how to get like just one color. So like if you just want to isolate the reds, um, I'm actually not going to go over that in this video because I've already made an entirely different video uh, on chroma key. Um, so if you want to check that out, I will leave the link in this script. I will leave the link in the description and um, yeah, that, that's some uh, extracurricular for you. You can figure out how to select just a single color. Um, so yeah, that's a, that's a pretty cool trick. I actually just like, I didn't know how to do this in Spark. I had no idea what to do. Um, so I looked up a Photoshop tutorial um, and used the same kind of basic ideas in the Photoshop tutorial and just translated them into Spark. So if you see like, a cool Photoshop technique. Um, it's totally possible to uh, just translate the ideas into the Spark world. Um, so use that as inspiration. Um, just kind of one more thing. I, I like playing with blend modes. It's cool to see, you know, how how different blend modes affect things. Like this one's pretty nice, additive. Um, you kind of get more texture in that shirt zone. Subtractive is going to be like pretty crazy. So this is a pretty cool step to, to play with um, in your effects just to see, you know, if some, some kind of crazy thing happens. 
Um, yeah, that's it. Um, if you like the video, hit subscribe. And I will see you on the next one.